my title is representative of, I, I don't think you can go all technology or no technology. I think you need a little of both, right? A little bit of the pencil and paper stuff for math, um, and then a little bit of the technology to really um, enhance student learning. Um, so, uh, basically, when I started here at Tungsys, um, I, Hendry Millward and I actually together uh, started at the same time and we were teaching developmental courses and um, we were trying to figure out, you know, some, what are some of the reasons that students aren't doing well in these courses and, you know, one big thing that we really thought was the case was that, well, they don't do homework because we don't collect homework in college because we can't we just can't collect every day 30 problems from 120 students or whatever many we have in all four of our classes and grade those and get them back to the next class. And, right? So, you know, we expected, you're in college, you know you need to do the homework to learn, but they weren't doing it, right? So first thing was, okay, so how can we get them to do it without us spending seven hours a day grading homework, right? Um, so it was selfish as well, right? We didn't want to spend a lot of time. Um, so we, we introduced um, some uh, new, new courses. Well, really, they were the same courses, but we introduced my math lab um, in a couple of the courses. And um, so we, they'd have to do homework because it was going to be counted toward their grade. My math lab would grade it for us, um, so that took out our part of it, right? And we thought, well, forcing them to do the practice, the homework, was going to make them do better, right? <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Wrong, right? And you can't see, but this is, I love grumpy cat, so. And I love math, because it makes people cry. But that's not really why I love math. But, um, yeah, so it didn't, it didn't real. we didn't see a huge improvement, right, just by doing that. And we're like, well, what's going on? We know they're practicing more. They should be doing better on their tests. They should be. So, you know, we started asking more questions, right? And um, so I was like, well, how are they doing the homework, right? So here's, you know, a typical, this is sort of what my math lab looks like. So here's, you know, a typical problem solve this, clear the fractions or decimals first, and then you put your solution in, right? And, um, you know, they have lots of help functions, right? Um, so we're thinking, well, that's a good thing, right? So they look at this problem, they don't know how to do it, they can say, help me solve this, view an example, watch a video, go to their textbook, um, connect to a tutor, ask their instructor, right? There's all these help functions, that's great, right? Students should, it's gonna help them do it. Well. It's not necessarily a good thing because this is what students very quickly, they're very tech savvy in some ways, right? And very quickly they figured out if they clicked on view an example, it would pull it up in a different window. They'd get an example that looked almost exactly like the one they were given and they'd kind of pull it off to the side and they would just kind of mimic without any understanding of what they were doing. They're like, well, look, there's a, you know, they're doing it by three here, uh, so I'm going to do it by three, and then they kind of mimic what happens, and then, you know, they, they weren't really understanding what they were doing. They were just, they weren't even reading necessarily the explanations, but just mimicking what was happening. Cut and paste. Yeah, kind of like cut and paste, yeah. And, you know, so, okay, so we said, all right, so maybe we can, you know, take that, um, out of here, right? No, you got to solve this yourself, right? You can't call tech support, okay? You have to solve this problem yourself, right? Or you're not going to be able to do it on the test. Okay, so how did we do that? Well, we removed view an example from the help functions, right? But they still had other help functions, so they had help me solve this. Right? So um, help me solve this. The difference was it would actually help them solve that problem. And you might say, well, how's that going to help? Because then they just get it right. Well, no, if you, if you use help me solve this, it actually walks you through the problem asking you questions at each step. You, you finish and you get it right and you feel so good and it marks you wrong. And, and it told you you got it right, 
but you still get it wrong on your homework. And the reason is you have not yet done it yourself. It helped you. So now you have to do a similar problem all by yourself, right? And so that did help a little bit, right? So remove, removing view, uh, view an example and having instead helped me solve this forced them to actually do it once with help and then once without help, right? Um, so that, that helped a little bit. Now the other problem that we encountered I, I said, well, <clears throat> can I look at your homework, right? So I said, let me, can I, let me see your homework, because they would have all these questions, they do really horribly on the test, but they'd have hundreds on all their homework, right? And I, so I said, well, let me see your homework, right? And they'd say, well, I don't really, I don't really write it down. And I'm thinking, how do you do math without writing it down, right? How? This is like impossible, right? How do you not write it down? Well, they were like scribbling, right, and throwing it away, or, or I do it on scrap paper, I don't keep it. So I just do it all over the place and then just chuck it at the end. Well, that's not going to help you this. How do, what do you go back to, to study for tests? Or you have someone like this that has it, but it's, you can't figure out where any single problem is. They've done it all over the place. They've got no organization at all. And so they were thinking, what the students thought is, when you tell them that they're doing their homework on my math lab, they actually think they're doing it on my math lab. Because you say, you're doing it on my math lab. And I had to stop saying that. I had to say, no, no, you are entering your answers in my math lab. But you're still working out the problem just as if you were taking that problem from the textbook. So, you know, you go back to that first problem that said solve one-third x plus three. You would take that problem, you would write it in your notebook, number one, right? Put it in your notebook, solve it, and then my math lab just wants your answer. So, what I say to the students is, remember when you were working out of the textbook, you'd solve the problem, and then what would you do? And they'd all say, we'd flip to the back of the textbook and check the answer. I said, right. So now... You work in the problem, but instead of flipping to the back of the textbook, you're letting my math lab check it for you. And that's really all my math lab is doing, is checking your answer, right? But you still have to do the same thing. Now, you know, this, this would work great if every student would listen to me. You really have to beat them over the head with this. You have to keep checking to make sure they're writing down their homework, right? Um, so, you know, they... They basically, they think that the technology replaces traditional. When I told them they were using my math lab, they thought it somehow replaced their regular homework. And I said, no, 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 no. You, you, still, you still do your homework the exact same way. It's just the way you're, you're checking it, right? So this kid says, I don't have my homework. My dog deleted it, right? So instead of my dog ate it, he deleted it, right? So, um... So my, basically what my conclusion um, has been from all this, uh, you know, and I'm still, I every semester I learn one new little trick that I apply. Um, but technology for me is a support but not a replacement, um, right? So there's still, math is still very old fashioned. It's still a very paper and pencil type of practice sport, right? Um, so I've now started saying they have to keep a notebook. This is mostly, again, for developmental students. If they're in the college-level courses, they tend to know this already, right? But it, for the students in the lower-level courses, they don't. Um, but they, they have to keep a notebook where they have to neatly work out problems. And I, and I sometimes check it, right? So I'll go over and I'll say, can I see your homework, right? Can I see it? Especially when I'm having them work problems in class or things like that. Um, they can't rely too much on the help functions. Um, so I, I provide them other opportunities for them to practice besides the homework where I take out all the help functions, right? So I have the homework where they have the help functions and maybe not the help, help me solve, or maybe not the view and example, but the help me solve this. But then I provide sample tests, quizzes, labs, things like that where there's no help functions. So they can see, do, do I really know how to do it myself without a help function or not, right? Um, and then um, 
The other thing is there's other things besides the help function that they can use to get help. So stu some students um, really like the videos because they can um, come to class and they get the notes, but then they go back and watch the video as well, and that's an extra support for them. Um, so there's videos for every section of the book that, you know, I always tell them it's not going to be as exciting as my class because, you know, it's not me on the video, but, you know, they take, take it for what it is. But, um, but you know, they, they do like those, and they can pause a video. Yeah. The video comes with the text that you're using? Yeah, so the My Math Lab is linked to a textbook. And the videos come right with the textbook, yeah. And um, there's lots of animations and games and things that they can play. So I try and show them those. Um, I used to think they would find them themselves. I, you know, if, if it's me, I would explore. Like, they have all these buttons on the page. I'd, I'd explore and see what's in each one. They don't. They just click on the homework button and the test button. That's it. They don't explore anything else. So I really have to show them, like, what's available to them. Um... All right, so the, here are some really th cool things that technology has helped me do. Well, at least I think they're cool, right? So um, the first one that I really like is I can email students by criteria. So they're all registered in my, my math lab section, and I can say, you know, someone who hasn't logged on for three days, right? Find all the students who haven't logged on for three days and email them, hey, what are you doing? You haven't done any homework for three days. Or students who have low grades, and I do that consistently like, very early on. You know, you're not doing the homework, or, you know, you didn't pass the first test. We need to talk, you know, things like that. And then at first I was really only using it to kind of get the students who were struggling, and then I realized, well, you know, I should probably say something to the students who are doing really well, and that, actually, they love that. So, you know, students who've done really well in the first exam, I'll send them an email. You did a great job. Keep it up. You know, keep studying the way you're studying. And, you know, they really like that, too. So I like that, that I can email students by whatever criteria I choose. Um, I can create personalized homework for each student um, based on what they already know how to do. So I can have them take like a little um, mini quiz and then it'll personalize their homework for them based on that. Um, so, you know, they don't have to do 10 problems on factoring if they already know how to factor. Um, and basically my math lab gives me unlimited um, practice problems, right, and unlimited practice tests. So, um, because once you create one, uh, it changes the numbers every time you're doing it, right? And I can also pool questions so that it changes the type of question every time they do it or things like that. So that's really great. Um, if I find students are really struggling, I can actually assign the videos that are on there as homework. Um, they can get around that by clicking on the video and then clicking out of it, but some of them don't know that. So, <laughs> um, and the, this is the other one that I really like. So the email my, my criteria, I really like. And then um, the ask my instructor button, um, I love because um, there's a lot of students, especially in math, they've got that math anxiety, they've got phobia, and they don't want to speak up in class, right? They don't want to say, I don't get this. I tried this in the homework. I couldn't do it. Um, so when they're doing the homework, when they hit ask my instructor, it just sends me an email with the exact problem that they're having trouble with. And so what I do is I say, just if there's something you're struggling with, hit that button. Every day before class, I go through my emails, I sort it by Ask My Instructor, I write down the problems, and I start every class by saying, okay, these are the problems people sent me. So no one knows who sent it to me, but these are the problems people sent me. Um, and we're going to go over those first before we start class today. So they don't have to raise their hand and say they didn't understand it. They don't have to do any of that. Um, the other thing I like about Ask My Instructor is I can always tell when there's something that the entire class doesn't understand because, like, eight people will send me the same problem, right? And so I'll be like, okay, we need to go over this again. <laughs> um, so that's really helpful for me as an instructor. Mm. And then the laziness aspect of it, um, for me, is that it, it keeps all my grades. I don't, I don't have to do any calculations. And it's great for the students because they know exactly how they're doing. So they have all the stuff on my math lab. Obviously, those grades are there. 
But then all I have to do is just enter their test grades in, and boom, it calculates those in. I can weight them any way I want. And so students can just click and know my grade right now is a 78.2, right? And they know up to the minute what their grade in the class is, which is really good. Um, all right. So basically, if you want a better answer, ask a better question, right? So, you know, I think some of the questions or some of our, that we were asking in the beginning maybe weren't the right ones. We had to, sort, we, we had to figure out along the way um, what the problem was, right? And ask the right questions, like, show me your homework, <laughs> right? I want to see what you in there, oh, I'm supposed to be writing it down. So, <laughs> yeah, I did it in my head, yeah. And there's some we know they can't. So um, we now the other thing um, that we've started to do. Um, so this is sort of the second. So my math lab's like my first big, um, you know, headway into technology with the with the students. But the other thing I've been really pushing for the last few years, and finally in this last year, it's come more and more is. Um, getting calculators in from pre-algebra and up and getting even the graphing calculators that can do a lot of the calculations for them because one, our students, I mean really, realistically, calculators are in their lives, right? They're, they're never without a calculator. It used to be like, well, how are you gonna figure it out if you don't have your calculator with you, right? Well, guess what? They all have phones, and every phone has a calculator. So that that's no longer, you can't say that anymore, right? Because they can do anything with it. They have a calculator with them at all times. Um, and, you know, the thing is we have this technology that does all the, the down and dirty work for us. We should use it to then make them go further, right? So, um, you know, from pre-algebra on up, we've introduced... Um, graphing calculators. Um, you know, pre-algebra, they don't really need it yet, but they go through the sequence and start learning more and more about it. So, you know, when we didn't have the calculator, I had to ask a question like, so if I travel 300 miles and 20 gallons of gas, how many miles per gallon does my car get? Because they can do that on paper and pencil with not too much time or effort, right? Um, and but if I give them a calculator, I can ask a question that's kind of more realistic, right? If you're gonna start figuring out how many miles per gallon your car gets, you need to know this is something you might wanna know, right? So basically, you have to look at your odometer before, right? You have to look at the odometer after and how many gallons it took and what the cost was, and then you can figure out how many miles per gallon did the car get, what was the cost to you to fill the tank? What was the cost per mile, right? Things like that. So those might be things that they're actually interested in knowing, right? But that, I mean, I wouldn't do it by hand. <laughs> I would use my calculator for that. Why should I make them do it by hand, right? Um, here's an example from elementary algebra. So we had no or low tech, right? Solve this system of equations. 2x plus 3y equals 7, 4x minus 2y equals 6. All right, you know, they can do it on paper. It's fine. They don't, when are they ever going to use this in real life, right? All right, so I say, well, okay, give you a little technology. All right, you got to rent a truck to move. You called two companies, right? First company says they charge thirty nine ninety five per day plus 19 cents per mile. Second company says they charge nineteen ninety five a day plus 49 cents per mile. Hmm. Which company are you going to choose if you're moving 50 miles? Which company are you going to choose if you're moving 75 miles? At what distance would the cost for each company be the same? So that you don't care which one you go with. Right, so that I can have them do with technology. It becomes a very doable problem and at least makes some sort of sense of, okay, this is maybe why I'm going to use something like this, right? All right, and then we have intermediate algebra. Right? Oh, that's funny. All right, so um, solve the following equation, 5 over 5 minus x equals 1. All right, I'll do it, right? All right, now I say, okay, technology. Participation inequality in social networking can be modeled by this function. 100 over 101 minus x for x between 5 and 100. So this represents the percent of postings by the bottom X percent of the population. 
okay? So this is an, actually a function that they can, that we can look at. So, you know, people, how many people on Facebook, right? And how many postings are there, and, right? So use your calculator to look at the graph, interpret the graph in words. What is this telling you, right? So how, what does this tell us about social media and how, you know, the, um, what is participation inequality in social media, right? Basically, it means you've got the bottom 5% posting the top, you know, 95% of the, right? So you've got 5% of the people posting 95% of the stuff, right? Um, and then, and then solve, solve it when it's equal to 9. And then what does that mean, right? What does that mean? Okay, so that's an example of actually getting them to think about some functions in their lives. Fostering critical thinking in statistics. All right, so before we didn't let them use a lot of, we had mini tab, but if they were in my classroom and taking a test, and I wanted them to find the standard deviation of a brand of paint, of a brand of paint. Um, they had to basically do all these calculations. And it takes a few minutes. And this is an easy one. This is one that doesn't have decimal points or anything. Like all the numbers are nice and round, right? And was still, and basically they come up with these numbers, great. But they don't, they wouldn't then really interpret them. So I said, well, let's let the calculator actually do the calculations for us. We don't, and the actual getting to the number isn't what I'm interested in. Do you know what that number tells you, right? So now I'd give them, you know, actual data, right? Um, and I'd say, okay, so here's uh, stocks. There's their financial stocks and energy stocks, okay? And um, this is the rates of return, five-year rates of return for each of these types of stocks, right? And I'd say, okay, so plug this into your calculator, find the mean and standard, or have your calculator find the mean and standard deviation. And now, tell me what that tells you. And based on those numbers, which type of stock would you choose to invest in and why, right? So now they actually have to use what does standard deviation mean? What does, you know, what is this telling me? Um, which is really what I want them to get out of a statistics class, not how to calculate a standard deviation. So I have a couple links here um, where I use tech to help students visualize um, a concept or to practice a skill. So one of the things that um, I've used is um, they have these videos um, on study skills. Um, and so I often will refer students to these in the developmental classes um, because uh, that's a big thing is they just don't know how to study um, for math. So that's one of them. And then there's games for the students who like, who like to play games, right? So fraction free fall is a big one. The games are so-so. I, I do have some students who've used them. Um, and some who haven't. But, you know, if they do like games, that's one thing. I use it a lot in statistics. Um, there's a lot of applets, so I won't, I won't actually run through the applets, but they can do these little applets where um, they can um, simulate probability um, by actually conducting um, uh, experiments, but they're conducting the experiments really quickly, right? So if they were to actually roll a dice and see how long it took, how many times they rolled a three or a four, it would take them a long time. But here they can say, let's roll it a thousand times, let's roll it ten thousand times, let's roll it a hundred thousand times, right? Um, correlation is another one. So this gives them different data sets and it asks them to guess correlation. <laughs> Um, which is kind of just to get them to see if they have a, a just a kind of feeling for when things have a linear correlation or not. Um, and a sampling just this this sampling distributions is a really really difficult concept for students to understand, um, and this allows them to sort of play with it, changing different things and seeing what happens. And it's one of those things that. Unless they can see it visually, they'll never get it. And it's very hard for me to 
do it on the board for them. So it's one of those things that where technology really helps because they can they can just see what's happening. It's a very visual thing. What I came up with is that um, the technology is never going to replace the paper and pencil practice that students need, right? So it, it's got to go hand in hand. Um, the other thing is even though they're really tech savvy, um, they really need to see how to use it in your particular setting, right? In an educational setting versus, you know, a social media setting, how to use it in a math class versus an English class. Um, and basically, you don't want to use the technology just for the sake of using the technology, right? Um, it really should support and enhance their learning in the, of the concepts, right? But it, it, you don't want to use it just because this is really neat, you know. Um, and the other thing I like about it is you can, you know, most of the students in the algebra classes, the big question is, when am I going to use this? So you can do more interesting problems. You can use the technology to say, well, here's where you could use something like this, right? When You couldn't do that before because the problems were so simple that they were like, well, I would just you know, I wouldn't even need algebra for that, right? Um, and so balance is sort of the key thing between technology and um, paper and pencil calculations. And that's it. That's my conclusion. How can I trust your information when you're using such outdated technology? Ciao. <laughs>